Welcome, folks, to another Fish Report Live. I'm Craig Fissinger. Sitting in tonight for the vacationing Ken Francis is Brandon Coverman. Brandon, you've actually been in Ken's seat before. Welcome back to the show. Well, thanks for having me. I love it. All right. Well, thanks for joining us out there. Back in our sound room, we actually have TK and then... Heavy D's on vacation as well, so we have our, our old Phil and Ross sitting in there for him, so we'll check in with those guys a little bit later tonight. And Brandon, another fun night on FRL. We're going to talk a lot of tournament basketball tonight, including some high school basketball and even some college basketball, aren't we? Yeah, we'll be talking to the uh, director of the Big Hoopla, Eric Farrell. He was on here a couple weeks ago, so we'll be talking to him again. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun, and uh, we're going to be talking, like you said, uh, some college hoops. We're going to be talking some high school hoops, going to be breaking down that district boys uh, games coming up on Friday night, as well as the regional games, the girls games in Division Four coming up on Thursday night. Can't wait to get to all that. But before we do, just like we do here every week on FRL Brandon, we have our weekly poll question, and tonight's poll question has to do with those big district games on Friday. Yeah, our poll question tonight is, which of the D4 Southwest boys games are you most interested in this Friday? Is it Fort Laramie versus Lachlan, Jackson Center versus Tri-Village, Southeastern versus Cincinnati Christian, or Fort Recovery versus Perry? And of course, that first game you mentioned, that Fort Laramie versus Lachlan, that's kind of breaking news because they weren't playing Lachlan this morning. Yeah, uh, well, Cincinnati College Prep found out that they had a couple ineligible players, and now that uh, they beat Lachlan, or Lachlan lost to him last time, Lachlan gets back into the tournament now and is playing Laramie all of a sudden. Yeah, I don't know how you look at that if you're a Redskin fan. You know, number one, I guess you get to play the team that lost, so that's that's a benefit. But on the other hand, you had a, a couple less days to prepare for Lachlan, so you know, you're know you pre preparing for, for college prep that whole time. So uh, not sure uh, how you look at that. I, I Maybe probably more to the positive, playing the team that, that actually got beat last week. Yeah, I, th I think you take it positively. I mean, Lachlan also has a couple less days to prepare. They've been off a couple more days, and Laramie's got a talented enough team. That I'm sure they'll, they'll beat. Uh, Lachlan. All right. Well, if you want to help us answer tonight's poll question and you're watching us on the Fish Report Live page, you can scroll down, answer that poll question, and check the results. If you're watching us on NK Telco or Game Face Ohio, we will have those results for you at the end of the show. All right, Brandon, well, let's get things going here. And I want to bring in uh, TK from the sound room right now to talk to us about the, these big games coming up this week. Uh, you know, first of all, TK, I know there was a big game in Division Three tonight. The Versailles girls played Baden. Any result from that one? Yeah, we do have the results on that, and Versailles did uh, end up winning on that one, 50 to 36. Actually controlled that game, uh, led every quarter at the end of each quarter. Uh, talking to some people, that Baden had a couple big tall girls underneath, but guard play couldn't get it there. Versailles defense held them down, and uh, that was pretty much the story the whole way. Not sure it was much of a, a real challenge for Versailles, and again, 50 to 36. So they're moving on to play. Uh, yeah, Jackie Saturday. Stonebreaker doing quite a job over there. They've been to the, uh, the, the, the Sweet 16, I guess you say now, four consecutive years, and uh, now they're playing in the regional finals again. So it uh, should be a lot of fun for Versailles fans. Yeah, I'm sure uh, Versailles has got some business to take care of. Uh, they finished in the regional runner-up last year, and I heard they – I was listening to the game on scores, and uh, they held Hamilton Baden without a field goal for about five minutes, so that defense is really locking down. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Jackie's always got them ready for tournament, that's for sure. Guys, let's talk about the uh, Division Four girls regional coming up on Thursday night, and the first game I want to talk about is that uh, that six fifteen game, and that is number one. 
uh, see the Jackson Center versus uh, Tri Village, and Jackson Center coming into this game, guys with a 21 and four record. Tri Village coming into this game with a 24 and one record. Both those teams won their conferences. Of course, uh, Jackson Center and the SCAL we talked about them a lot this year. And then Tri Village haven't spent much time on them at all, but they won the the Cross County Conference. And thoughts on that game, guys? Uh, well, I think that's going to be a very good game. You know, Shelby County versus CCC, pretty uh, comparable school size matchup. The matchup I'm going to look for is to see how uh, that Jackson Center controls Dana Command down there. She had 23 points against Cedarville. I want to see how Alicia Kessler and all of them in the paint control Dana Command. And the best matchup you're going to see is guard Cassie Meyer versus Allie Downing. Allie Downing's committed to go play at Belmont Abbey, so I think that's going to be an interesting matchup on the wing. Yeah, I have to agree with you, Brandon. I'm, I'm looking at the matchup. I, I'm saying it's coming down to that guard play. Uh, trying to look at matchups of who played who when. Uh, Tri-Village just got past the Covington team by two points when they didn't have a couple girls injured early in the season. Uh, I think that points to, uh, like you said, a very good matchup between the two. Guard play, who can get it into the tall girls underneath and who can't. Um, I, that's what it's going to come down to. Yeah, Jackson Center, you know, guys, that you, know, you mentioned up uh, Tri-Village having a little bit of trouble there last week. Uh, Jackson Center had a little bit of trouble. Cincinnati Christian, too, as far as their shooting percentage, 11 for 42 from the field for 26%. So not exactly their A game, but uh, I, I look for a good game there, guys. As you mentioned, those two players, Danica Mann and, and, and uh, Downing over there, you know, those two girls, you know, the one loss that Tri-Village had this year was to Versailles, uh, a, a team that, uh, you know, has Danielle Winter and, and, and uh, Kami McEldowney on it. I, I see that team much like uh, uh, maybe a Versailles team, you know, they they uh, they have a with with Cassie Meyer and, and and Kessler and some of those girls. I think I look at this as one of the, the, the best matchups of the weekend. I, I think these two teams go at it again. You know, you got the whole you know won the CCC, won the uh, the the SCAL, and as tough a time as I know we give the the CCC around here sometimes. I think Tri Village is, is probably the cream of the crop in that in that uh, that conference, and I, I I look for a good game in that one. Yeah, I think Tri Village has proved they're the real deal, and I'm actually going to pick Tri Village to go over Jackson Center in this game. I just think they got too much talent. All right, let's jump forward to the next game, guys. At the 8 o'clock game, we've got uh, number 5 state-ranked Minster uh, from the MAC at 23-2, and two, taking on unranked Rushi, our hometown team there. They uh, came from the SCAL, obviously, at 21-5. And I and, uh, want to get your thoughts on this game, guys. Yeah, um, well, Minster's got the MAC Player of the Year and Rosie Westerbeck, but I don't even think Rosie Westerbeck's their best player. Their best player is Courtney Pranger, a sophomore. She has long arms. She's a physical post player, I hear, and I'm anxious to go watch her play tomorrow night. I think she's really the spark of that team, and they got, there you go, about eight, nine, ten girls deep, I hear, and heck, they're one of their non-main players, Taylor Kogi, went off for 22 points the other night, so you don't know what to expect. TK, you know, Brandon mentioned Westerbeck, uh, and she is the uh, the MAC Player of the Year, but uh, she she didn't have she wasn't their top scorer this last this past game. Yeah, Craig, she's been hampered by an injured right hand the last couple uh, weeks. Uh, I can't remember which game she injured it in, or whether I think it might actually have been in practice. However, uh, she's still been effective. Obviously, plays good defense, but uh, been able to clamp down her. But like uh, Brandon said, other kids are stepping up on that team and scoring and taking. Uh, taking some of that heat off of uh, the player of the year there. Uh, looking at the Rushi side, uh, I think it's uh, going to come back to the same thing. Who can step up? Uh, last game we had uh, a couple different kids step up. And who, who can who can fill in that spot? And uh, Maria Heron's been guarded by the best defensive player on the other team, so everybody else has had to step up, and so far it's worked. We'll see where that comes out Saturday or Thursday night. Yeah, you're exactly right, Heron. You know, they had their, their best defender on her again in that Covington game, and we had girls like uh, Tiffany Hatcher and Larissa Poling and Cameo Wilson stepping up. And, and uh, uh, you know, Heron still was able to do it on the defensive end, picked up four steals in that fourth quarter, and I thought really ignited them in that second half when Rushi finally took control. But, uh, you know, she wasn't able to score because they were, were guarding her so well. Finally did pick up five points in the, in the, in the fourth quarter just off free throws. But, uh, you know, that's, that's the, the makings of a good team. When your best player is, is, isn't on offensively or can't score, you have other girls that can step up. Yeah, Covington ran a box and one on Maria Heron, which a lot of teams have during the season. And there's been a lot of games where actually Maria scored five points. And I just look up at the scoreboard and think, how did we score 45 points? <laughs> I, I don't know. But all those girls step up and do their job. It's incredible. 
All right, well, let's talk about uh, some boys' action. And, and like I said, on Friday, we got the district games coming up down there at UD Arena, Division Four boys, that first game coming up at 5.30. They're, uh, again, it's not college prep. It's actually going to be Lachlan taking on Fort Laramie. Fort Laramie out of the SCAL, of course, at 20-5. and five. Taking on a Lachlan team that uh, they were 10-14, and 14, but uh, after that forfeit, I, I, I guess that makes them 11-13. and 13. I'm not sure how that works exactly, but uh, any thoughts on – you know anything about Lachlan right now? Well, they have a guard named Jarek Smith who scored 33 points against uh, college prep, and they have another uh, forward, uh, DeAndre Robinson. But we, we don't know much about Lachlan, I guess, with being two hours north of here. So I'm going to pick Larmy in this game. I just think their guard plays too good. And I don't, it doesn't sound like they have a guy who can stop Tyler Siegel. Yeah, Smith and Johnson both a- actually averaging about 14 points a game. As Brandon said, TK, don't know a lot about Lachlan, but I know you know a lot about Larmy because you just saw him last weekend. Yeah, as Brandon said, uh, they're, they're playing well. The guard play is, is very, playing very well. Uh, Dribble drive, as we saw against the Raiders, is really working right now. So that team has to be high on themselves. Looking at this Lachlan team, that's got to help them even more. I think even if they have a down game, they'll probably go right past Lachlan. From what we've heard, they're not very good. But I kind of feel like the uh, Larmy coaching staff right now scrambling to try and figure out who Lachlan is after spending time figuring out College Hill or uh, College Prep. So I don't see this being much of a game for the uh, – for the Redskins. Yeah, I don't see anybody able to handle Siegel. What a load he was last week against Rushi. You know, uh, five for six from the floor, seven for nine from the line, 17 points, nine rebounds, four blocks. If he has a game like that against Lachlan, uh, Larmy moves on. Yeah, I think they're going to put Tyler Siegel in similar sets they did against Rushi with, the, uh, with having the ball with his back to the basket any way he likes it. If he has it the way he likes it, he can score at will. All right, and the next game, guys, at 7.30, we have Jackson Center coming out of the SCAL again at 18-6, and six, taking on a Tri-Village team uh, out of the CCC. And uh, thoughts on that one? Well, I think the matchup to watch here is definitely Trace Couch versus Brady Wildermuth, two big guys who score a ton of points, who are respectively first team in each conference. And I think Jackson Center's key is going to be can they slow okay, down yeah, the game and can they stop board. Gavin this, Richards. Um, I think how they defend that guard play is going to be the key yeah, to the game. Yeah, we, I know we talked about Wildermuth. Uh, what a job that he did against that. I was at that Fairlawn game, the sectional final game, and okay, uh, when okay, uh, Elker um, decided to put right Wildermuth out front on the, the point, half, and they kind of ran a, what we call a flat um, offense like where a, four guys minute, basically uh, line up on the baseline. Wildermuth just went one-on-one with the guy okay. uh, in, in the lane. If they would collapse on him, he kicked right, it out to a guy like Platfoot. Platfoot happened to be on, uh, and, and, and when that happened, Jackson Center, uh, that was, that was the, the key to their success in that game. But what a what a luxury to have a guy like Wildermuth that's that big that can take the ball up front like that and, and run the point. Yeah, he handles the ball well for his size. I mean, he, he takes the ball may, maybe 20% of the time when Sosby or Platfoot doesn't want to. But if Platfoot and Sosby are alone, and even Boozer too, they can just shoot it if they're no one even close to him. They do a real well job of doing that, and I think – Coach Elkert's going to have a good game plan. You can never underestimate Scott. Yeah, and you mentioned on Tri-Village, uh, Trace Couch, we've all heard of him, and uh, I think most people have heard of Gavin Richards over there. But uh, look out for Johnny Wilson. Johnny Wilson is a guy that uh, led them in scoring in that game that went over Troy Christian, had 15 points. I believe he's also the quarterback on that uh, that Tri-Village team over there. So uh, you heard it here, Johnny Wilson. Look for that name. So I certainly will. All right, well, that's going to do it for our high school boys talk and girls talk. We're going to take a short break, but stay right there. When we come back, we're going to talk a little college hoops with our interview with Eric Farrell. Oh, 
Welcome back to the second half of Fish Report Live. Before the break, we were talking some high school hoops. Going to change gears now and talk a little college hoops. And, of course, uh, everyone knows Selection Sunday coming up this weekend, as well as the first four kicking things off down there at UD Arena next week. Uh, and our first guest here we have tonight is a – actually, we were supposed to have another guest, uh, the, the chairman of the uh, Big Hoopla down there in Dayton. And he was uh, unavailable, so we're going to have a guest that we had on a few weeks ago. He is the executive director of the Big Hoopla. He's Eric Farrell. We're happy to have him live on the phone right now. Eric, welcome to Fish Report Live, and thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me on again. Sorry, uh, sorry you guys had to settle <laughs> for me. Um, Jeff was uh, kind of pulled in a couple different directions, so you get his uh, second best uh, for you guys tonight. Sorry. All right. That's, uh, we, we love it. You know, abs- actually, Eric, I, I, I wish Ken, Ken's not here tonight. He was with us last week, my co-host. He's not here tonight. Uh-huh. He actually had, uh, he's vacationing this week, but uh, I have our, our high school intern here, Brandon. He's going to be asking a few questions, so I hope you don't mind that. But uh, Great. I got to tell our viewers a real quick story. My uh, my mother in law was actually down at UD Arena for the for the for the VCU game when the Flyers Dayton Flyers wrapped it up there last week, and uh, she called me after the game and says, "Hey Craig, I met the guy that uh, that you had on your show a couple weeks ago, Eric Farrell." And I said, "I said, how did you meet him?" She said, "Well, he was down on the floor, and I yelled at him." And I said, "Well, how did he know who you were?" He said, "I just told him I was Fish Report's mother in law." So. She's a crazy <laughs> Flyers fan, so uh, apologies from uh, for me on that one. But uh, she's a Flyers nut. No, that's great. Is uh, <laughs> that you know those guys made for uh, they, they, the suspense and the excitement of that game was pretty awesome. So you know we wish them the best of luck as they take off for Pittsburgh today and you know Friday um, and through the week, and hopefully they can wrap up another championship and bring it home for us. Absolutely. Well, listen, I know you got an exciting weekend coming up with the uh, the big hoopla events getting started. Uh, what's what's going on this weekend? Yeah, so you know, we're we're right in the full swing of things um for our, our events specifically with the 4 miler. Um again, it's on selection Sunday. Um you know, we call it a 4 mile run, but really you, you can walk it, you can jog it, you can just be very leisure about it. It's just a great way for the Dayton region to come together on selection Sunday morning um to just kind of kick off the day. Um, you know, it's great because we uh, um, have a great opportunity to um, give all of the participants um, finisher medals this year, which is kind of new to the to kind of our portfolio for the four miles. So everybody will get a uh, finisher medal along with some cool redesigned T-shirts. So those are kind of the, the fun things going on um, Sunday morning. And then Sunday afternoon, we shift our attention to the students in the region, K-8, to for a free event um, down at Chaminade Julian High School, um, our Hoop Lost STEM Challenge, where the kids will be able to come down, shoot some hoops, participate in a cool hot shot contest where they'll be able to win prizes. Um, and kind of the highlight of that, to be honest with you, in terms of the prizes, is we had a great oper- we had a great partnership with Under Armour this year. So all the kids that participate this year will be um, fully equipped with a brand new Under Armour dry fit shirt with yeah. some hoopla branding on it so that's kind of one of the prizes the other ones are scene 75 gift cards itunes gift cards and then the grand prize are ipads and the winners on sunday will participate at halftime of one of the first four games um kind of in our stem challenge finals so it's you know that's fun but the other side of that is the stem component of it and you know when you look through the dayton region stem is everywhere you look between science technology education math and we have a great opportunity for the students to come in, we have 22 amazing partners this year. It's double what we've had in the past between DPNL, who'll come down and 
Show kids how electricity works to select tech about drones. Gem City Engineering bringing in their robots. Premier Health Scene Seventy Five doing some virtual reality, and so the kids really get some great hands-on STEM experience and STEM exposure through very interactive and cool um, kind of displays. So you know we've got a full day on Sunday, and I would encourage everybody to come down for some of it, come down for all of it, because you know Dayton, Ohio is the epicenter of college basketball. And we're getting things tipped off on Sunday morning. Hi, Eric. This is Brandon. Um, I know you're going to be yeah. disappointed to hear this, but I'm a big Xavier Muskie <laughs> fan. And uh, no, and I'm not disappointed because hopefully they can sneak <laughs> into the first four, and you know it'll, it'll be a divided arena. Yeah, uh, there's a possibility that they could be playing at the first four this year. And I hear they have open practices now. How do I get access to get to these open practices? Do yeah, I need that's, tickets? You know, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, so open practices are free to the public. Um, and so when Selection Sunday gets announced, you know, um, all, the, all the teams then get, get sent over to um, kind of the university team, and they, the, the seeding process then kind of plays itself out with those eight teams that, that come. And open practices will be Monday evening, 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock, and then Tuesday afternoon, noon to 3. And those are free. They're open to the public, and, you know, you can – Check out your favorite team if they if they happen to get announced to come to Dayton, Ohio. But the other cool thing is what we're going to do is we're going to, between us, the University of Dayton, and the, our partners with the NCAA, um, we're going to give away some free T-shirts with some first four branding, um, and then all the concessions will be open. So there's going to be some concession vouchers to people that come down. And between that, seeing your favorite team, and, you know, just kind of, seeing the inner workings of a college practice kind of firsthand, you know, it won't be the full details as, uh, in terms of their scouting coverages and all that stuff, but it's a great opportunity for fans of all ages to come down and see what a college basketball practice is like as a team prepares for an NCAA tournament. And it's fun, it's loose, and you know, I think we're going to have a great turnout um, with these new things we're rolling out, and I would encourage everybody to come on down and, and see it firsthand. Hopefully, hopefully one of our favorite teams gets there, so if it's Xavier, it's Xavier, if it's, you know, if it's Ohio State, if it's Michigan State or whoever you're rooting for, hopefully, you know, there's there's a piece of it other than the T-shirts, the insiders feel for it, that, that'll bring some people in. All right, I also have another question for you, one more. And so I'm, I'm about 18 years old, and I'm, I'm a big college basketball fan, as you can tell. Is there anything that you haven't touched on that I can't miss, like anything that I just cannot miss that's not very publicized by you guys that – I can go and see if I want to go to the first four. Sorry, guys, you were cutting in and out. Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm a big college basketball fan, about 18 years old. Is is there anything that's not very publicized by you guys that I I must go see that would be neat for an 18-year-old boy like me or just a young teenager? Eric, we still have you. Yep, you still got me. I think I got something bad on my end. I think I oh. caught something about um, some insider information. Unfortunately, <laughs> I wish we had it. Um, we don't have any of that information, and that's kind of what makes you know that's what makes March Madness so great and the NCAA tournament so great is when when that tournament is revealed, tournament bracket is revealed um, Sunday that the whole country finds out um, all together, and then the brackets start being filled out. And it just, you know, it's between that and the Super Bowl, it's kind of those two sporting events from across the country that really bring everybody together, whether or not you're a sports fan. And this one's special for us because, you know, we get to tip off March Madness for the 17th straight year. Um, and we really take pride in that as a, as a region, as a community. is something that we value. It's something we cherish. And this year more than ever, it's, it's important to sell that arena out as it's kind of our last, uh, our last effort um, to put um, another feather in our cap for consecutive sellout nights in this bid process that we're still in as we, we bid for the first four for some subsequent years, as long as along with first and second round games coming up. So it, it's ultra important. It's great. The, the, it's, if you've ever been to a game, you know what it feels like. It's almost kind of that Dayton Flyers versus VCU feel when, those two 16 seeds are going against each other, and the, the arena's into it, and the, the crowd gets behind it, and it's really a final four field for the first four. And where and where can I get my tickets at? Do I need to go to Ticketmaster, yeah. StubHub? So uh, we are a one-stop shop. If you go to DaytonHoopla.com 
slash NCAA tickets. You can get all your tickets there. Um, you know, we're, we're nearing a, a capacity crowd, so I would encourage people to get their tickets now and don't kind of wait till the last minute. Um, single session tickets are still available for the 300 level, and then um, all session tickets for the lower ar- arena as well. And while you're at DaytonHoopla.com, you might as well just check out the STEM Challenge, check out the, the, the four-miler. And then the other cool thing I'll kind of point you guys towards is our Hoopla ticket program where since 2012 we've been able to donate upwards of 30,000 tickets free of charge to airmen serving at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Um, and I'd be remiss to say that we can't do that without our great sponsors that kind of uh, kind of fuel the fire, if you will, between Montgomery County, DPNL, you know, Dayton Airport, Gadaha, Heidelberg. Those, those are the sponsors, Dayton Freight, IGS Energy, RB Jurgens, Premier Health, they're the ones that are driving this. They're the ones that are helping us put more tickets than ever before into the hands of the airmen, into the hands of the students to continue to, you know, sell that place out. So we're doing our part. I would encourage all the fans, all the listeners out there to do your part so we can sell this thing out and kind of stake claim to what we know here in the Dayton region, that the first four is ours and nobody takes it from us. But if we can do that one more time in a really powerful, meaningful way, it's just another feather in our cap to kind of say this is ours and then to double A, hopefully can give it to us for another four years, and we can see what we can do now with five years running room coming off of this one. All right, Eric, listen, hey, great stuff. Uh, sounds like a lot of fun this weekend. Thanks for joining us tonight on the show. Uh, good luck this weekend, and, and we'll see you down at UD Arena. Hey, thanks for having me on. You guys are awesome. Thanks. All right, that was the Eric Farrell, the executive director of the Big Hoopla, and uh, a lot of fun to talk to. I know, again, Ken probably wishes he was here when he found out we had Eric on the show because Ken, being the big Flyer fan like you are, a Xavier fan, he would have had uh, a couple, I think, Dayton Flyers questions to ask uh, Farrell there. Oh, yeah, I bet. <laughs> Ken loves his Flyers. All right, well, let's go back to the sound room, check in with TK and Ross back there, see how things are going. I know we got the, uh, the poll question to get to. Why don't you read that real quick for our viewers again? Uh, Brandon, and we'll uh, we'll have TK and Ross check on the results. Well, our poll question again, uh, as repeated earlier, uh, which Division Four Southwest Boys game are you most interested in this Friday? Is it Fort Laramie versus Lachlan, Jackson Center versus Tri Village, or Southeastern versus Cincinnati Christian, or Fort Recovery versus Perry? What do you got, guys? All right, I'm going to go with what ifs. I'm thinking that the uh, the former Fort Laramie uh, Cincinnati College Prep probably would have been the game to watch. But uh, with that being out of the way, right now it's Jackson Center Tri Village, and I agree with that. Bringing in 70% of the votes, and then Fort Recovery Perry is that next one. And that will be also a pretty tough battle. I think that's up in uh, Walpock, right? I agree. So we, we talked about that before we went on the games. show tonight. I know a few of you guys have seen Perry this year or saw him earlier in the preseason and said they're, they're very good. Yeah, they, they like to get out and run. I mean, I saw them play versus Rushi, but I can't really tell much from the preseason. I was more focused on watching my Raiders than really Lima Perry, but it's whatever. All right, and, and one more thing, guys, before we, uh, we, before we get out of here, this actually wraps it up for our winter sports season. This is our season finale for the winter. We're going to take a couple weeks off and uh, – uh, recharge our batteries, come back in the spring and talk some spring sports. But all of us here are going to be busy this weekend because we are broadcasting some games, audio only, not not the video like you see here, but audio only. We're broadcasting the CYO State Boys Tournament, aren't we? Yeah, the North Valley Region CYO has a little rotation of every five, six years they get to host the State CYO Tournament. And it's between Rushi, Lehman, Versailles, and Larmy. And uh, those are all host sites. Yeah, those are all your host sites, and we'll be audio casting some of those games on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, various throughout the night and morning. Well, well none of us has any uh, broadcasting experience. TK does. Now he, he broadcasts some volleyball back in the day for Fish Report, and uh, he said, "Well, you just got to figure out the players' names." And I don't know any of these <laughs> players from Cleveland and, uh, and 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 Toledo and Cincinnati, but uh, I guess we're going to have to learn this weekend. TK, what any any tips for? Uh, for us first-time broadcasters over here, uh, you got to pick out the <laughs> pick out the most important ones. Know those two or three names, and then fill in the rest with Joes and Bobs and Eds, and <laughs> fake it from there. Well, we're going to lean on uh, uh, Ross back there because I know he's a full-time statistician for the uh, for the boys team. He has been for a couple years. Ross, you you'll be taking care of stats for us, and I trust you'll uh, you'll help us out with names and, and stuff like that. Yeah, sure will. <laughs> 
All right. Well, listen, uh, yeah, for any listeners out there that want to tune into us, uh, pretty simple. You can just go to the Fish Report website at www.fishreportonline.com. There is a tab at the top that says streaming. You hit that streaming link and uh, just follow the instructions and you can listen to us. But uh, we've got nine games Friday night, a couple games at 6 30 and 8, Saturday at 10, 11 30, 6 30 and 8, and Sunday at 11 30, or excuse me, 10 30, 12 and 1 30. That's a full schedule. Oh, it's going to be a blast. <laughs> I can't wait. Looking forward to it. All right. With that, that wraps it up for, again, our winter sports season. Do you want to say special thanks to, uh, to Eric Farrell for coming on the show tonight. Special thanks for Brandon for sitting in for Ken tonight. Uh, but Ken and I and the crew will all be back again in a couple weeks on March 29th. Until then, good night, everyone, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Hanging at the fish report. 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 For your latest news in high school sports, tune in to the fish report. Bed, don't need no pull when you tune in to the fish report. Hanging at the fish.